Thank you for joining us for this very special presentation marking this year's Remembrance Day ceremonies carried live from Gore Park in downtown Hamilton. This event is brought to you by the Hamilton Veterans Committee and the City of Hamilton. I am Tim Fletcher, your host for this presentation. We begin today's coverage with a look at Hamilton's direct connection to what we call Remembrance Day today. The idea of a public remembrance of military wartime casualties is relatively new and it stems from the Fenian Raid at Ridgeway, Ontario in June of 1866. Fenians were Irish Americans who thought attacking Canada would be a way to force the British out of Ireland. They organized a small army which crossed the Niagara River at Buffalo on June 1, 1866. The Canadian government had to force them out of our country and they mobilized the Queen's Own Rifles in Toronto and the 13th Battalion in Hamilton, among other smaller forces. They succeeded in their mission, not without controversy, but the government did nothing to recognize the soldiers who took part. No medals were issued and no commemoration made, despite several fatal and wounded casualties. Eventually, in 1870, the Queen's Own Rifles took matters into their own hands. They erected the Canadian Volunteer Monument in downtown Toronto and began placing decorations at it to commemorate their casualties. On the raid's 25th anniversary in 1891, up to 50,000 citizens showed up at the monument to view the military ceremonies. Eventually, the Canadian government recognized the veterans of all Fenian raids with a Volunteer Service Medal, pensions and other awards, and Decoration Day became an established event. It was later expanded to recognize the veterans of the Northwest Rebellion, the South African War, and later the First World War. Following World War I in 1919, an Armistice Day was established in the British Empire for November 11th. Because this clashed with what was Thanksgiving Day at the time, little heed was paid to Armistice Day events, which involved mainly veterans of the Great War meeting in small groups at local memorials. There were no parades and no nationwide observance. In 1931, public pressure forced the Canadian government to act. They renamed the day to Remembrance Day, and Thanksgiving Day was moved to October. As Remembrance Day, the intent was to honor fallen soldiers and not the politics and military events involved in war. The formal service we now take part in evolved gradually, with military parades, public participation, the sounding of last post, the rouse or reveille, and the lament on bagpipes. Canadians recognized the need to honor those who went off to war and did not return, and Ottawa took heed. Further, Hamilton's connection saw local citizens rallying a movement towards the creation of the Gore Park Cenotaph. It was a project of the Canadian Club of Hamilton to replace their flagpole with something of more enduring significance and ceremonial. Designed by up-and-coming architect William Souter, the structure is a general replica of the Cenotaph at Westminster in London, England. It was dedicated on May 22, 1923 by our Governor General, Viscount Bing of Vimy. Bing was the leader of the Canadian forces at Vimy Ridge during World War I and was popular with Canadians. Thousands of Hamiltonians were on hand for the unveiling. Small improvements and modifications were made over the years, including updating inscriptions to reflect later conflicts up to and including Afghanistan. For many years there were large crowds when Remembrance Day was marked, but in the post-Vietnam era when the anti-war sentiment surged, crowds dwindled. There were even protests. The purpose of Remembrance Day was lost. There were claims that it had glorified war and perpetuated violence. Interest waned. But as the nature of peacekeeping changed, so too did public perception. There was a realization that Canadians were often in harm's way, not for themselves, but for others. Respect began to build. Attendance began to grow again at Remembrance Day services. 9-11 was the final link when Canada and others went to the aid of our ally, the United States, under the NATO Charter in Afghanistan. 
Canadians were dying in battles large and small in response to an actual attack on North American soil. By and large, the public got it. That created the atmosphere in Hamilton where some long overdue changes were approved for the Cenotaph. In 2015, the entire area was redesigned and rebuilt. Major improvements were incorporated, including illustrative panels, improved lighting, and landscaping. In addition, the entire monument was turned 90 degrees, so it now faces the west. Now indeed, at the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. As today marks our day of remembrance, we turn our attention to the raid at Dieppe, France, where Hamilton's RHLI saw many casualties. This video pays tribute to the 197 officers, NCOs, and men of the RHLI who died in that battle on 19 August 1942.
We now welcome a statement from the City of Hamilton and Mayor Fred Eisenberger. Remembrance Day is a time to honor and remember Canadian men and women in uniform and pay tribute to those who have answered the call to serve. Generation after generation of Canadians have served and sacrificed as members of the armed forces. Many have made the ultimate sacrifice, and we owe a great debt to our veterans, to the fallen, and to the families who care deeply about them. Throughout the month of November, we wear poppies to hold them close to our hearts, to show our gratitude and respect for their courage. We honor the depth of their sacrifice and will forever keep them in our thoughts. On behalf of my council colleagues, myself and the City of Hamilton, thank you to the Canadians who serve and who serve today, lest we forget. Thank you, Mayor Eisenberger. We are going to take a short break and we will return with the start of our live coverage from the Hamilton Cenotaph in Gore Park in downtown Hamilton. Keeping you connected to the people, the stories, and the experiences shaping our community, it's the Hamilton Network. Join us this fall as we introduce new connections, new faces, and a new time. And not to mention you, Val. It's all happening right here, Tuesdays and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. on Cable 14 and Cable14.com. Food in general is just, you need it for mental stability. And sometimes if you don't have that access to food, you just can go mentally in a downward spiral. Sometimes it's hard living paycheck to paycheck. If it wasn't for a food pantry, some days I would probably not be eating at all. I can't thank people enough for donating to the War Amps. If I could, I'd give every single donor a big hug because things that they've allowed these kids to do are amazing. Gives them the opportunity to experience life as everyone else would. They can do so much. They can play musical instruments, snowboarding, play hockey, kayak, swim. There's no doors being closed to them, and I find that amazing. It's affected my family in a way that we may never be able to thank you. I'm Ruth Greenspan. And I'm Isaac Rashid, and we invite you to pull up a chair and join us on Table Talk. On our next episode, we talk about the return of enjoying live music here in Hamilton, something we've missed. So join us for Table Talk right here on Cable 14 and watch us online anytime at cable14.com. Good morning, Silver Cross families, federal, provincial, and municipal representatives, veterans, and Hamiltonians. Welcome to the annual Remembrance Day Memorial Service. Hamiltonians have been gathering at the Cenotaph since 1923, when it was dedicated to honor the 61,000 Canadians killed in the Great War, 2,000 of them from Hamilton. We recognize this service takes place upon the traditional territories of the Erie, Neutral, Huron-Wendat, Haudenosaunee, and Mississaugas. This land is covered by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, which was an agreement between the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabek to share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. 
We further acknowledge that this land is covered by the Between the Lakes Purchase, 1792, between the Crown and the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. We will begin our ceremony with the singing of our national anthem, led by the Dundas Concert Band. I now call upon the garrison chaplain, Padre Michael Aldred, for the opening prayer. Good morning. In recognition of the many different faith traditions that are here with us today, I ask you to join me in this moment of reflection and prayer. Today, in the presence of our veterans, we remember those who fought with honor and courage that we can live today in a country where the values of freedom pride and courage resonate with power. Our story as told by our national anthem is the true north, strong and free. It invokes admiration and inspires us to surpass ourselves and be better than we thought possible. We gather today hearts filled with gratitude and pride for all those who have served Canada in every time and place, those who made the ultimate sacrifice as well as those who still carry the wounds of service in body and soul. We will never shy away from the duty to remember because this is the place from which we draw strength and resilience. We are proud to be a part of the history and to have fought under the Canadian flag. We pray for leaders at every level and in a particular way for Her Majesty the Queen, the Governor General, the Prime Minister and the Acting Chief of Defence Staff. Prepare us to face anything that opposes inclusion or wholeness, whether in our own hearts or the actions of others, so that we might be strengthened in our shared values and service to Canada. War tears apart. It takes that which is whole and dismembers it. To remember is to bring together again that which was once torn apart. It is our solemn duty to remember as those who live as the beneficiaries of the peace brought throughout the service and sacrifice of our forebears. It is in doing so that we honor their legacy and participate in their noble work. The global pandemic continues to challenge us. Each of us have gained a new appreciation for community, for those whom we hold dear, those who we have not been able to see in person, yet we know there is still more to do. Each of us is called to look out for one another, to foster and encourage the common good that binds us together. May today's commemoration inspire us to work together for a better future. Amen. Joining us to read the iconic poem in Flanders Fields are Master Corporal Victoria Gerard and Master Corporal Fisher Smith of the 62 RHLI Cadet Corps.
In Flanders fields the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place, and in the sky the larks, still bravely singing, fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders Fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands, we throw the torch, be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow. In Flanders Fields. Please stand as you are able for the act of remembrance.
would like to call upon the past chair of the Hamilton Veterans Committee, Bob Fife, to read the Veterans Prayer. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Thank you. I now call up. I now call upon those with wreaths to proceed to the cenotaph while the band plays the hymn, Abide With Me. Our first wreath from Mrs. Bev McCraw, Silver Cross mother of Sergeant Sean Allen Eads.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as you are able for the playing of the Royal Anthem. Captain Michael Aldred will close with a blessing. This morning we have gathered to reflect upon the great contributions and sacrifices of the men and women of our armed forces. We have paused to pay respect to our veterans and the current members for their selflessness and service. And this week I was reminded from a passage that says... Then I heard the voice of the one saying, Whom shall I send, and whom will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. Throughout our nation's history, we have heard a voice calling us to serve something greater than ourselves. The men and women of past generations have heard it and faithfully responded. During the First World War as a new country, even with a small population still, over 619,000 men and women have voluntarily enlisted for service. They heard the call. The next generation did not shrink back when the world was again in need. Canada saw more than one million volunteers join the Army, Navy, and Air Force during World War II. We had a population of just 11 million, meaning nearly one in 10 volunteered for service. Even though these conflicts, world wars, Korea, Afghanistan have been far from home, in the service of peace, Canadians do not neglect nations who are in need. So today is not only a day for remembrance, but a day to give thanks. Through our song, our prayers, the laying of wreaths, we give thanks for each name etched upon every cenotaph across our country because everyone represents a Canadian who believed their courage and their service would make the world a better place. And in our silence, we hold them nearest to our hearts, giving thanks for their sacrifice. Today is also a day we recognize that the torch, as John McCree's poem states, has been passed to us. So today we commit to carrying on the struggle to fight against poverty, violence, and corruption commit to setting right the wrongs within our own country, commit to never turning a deaf ear to the voices of those suffering injustice, regardless of whether those voices are near and far, speak our language or care, share our skin color. We too will hear them and the voice calling, whom shall I send? So today, let us echo the voices of our forefathers and our foremothers as we say together, here am I send me. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you to all the participants in today's ceremony, the Dundas Concert Band under Bill Rolfe, our piper, uh, Corporal Alistair Sanderson, our bugler, Master Corporal Justin Forte, our cadet readers who are acknowledged in the program, Thank you to our Silver Cross families, members of the government, all parade participants, and all citizens who joined us today to remember. And of course, we couldn't do this without the City of Hamilton Veterans Committee and Christopher Redford and Carolyn King. This concludes the ceremony. Thank you and God bless. This concludes our coverage of the Remembrance Day ceremonies at the Hamilton Cenotaph at Gore Park in downtown Hamilton. To find out more about Canada's military history, please visit veterans.gc.ca. Thank you for joining us. I'm Tim Fletcher.